In this tutorial, you'll learn how the Lumenzia Basics panel works at a high level. When you install Lumenzia, you're also installing a secondary panel available under Window, Extensions, Basics. When you click this, you get the Lumenzia Basics panel. And what you have here are a bunch of different functions that not every user is going to want to use with Lumenzia. So it's created as a separate panel to give you the option to show it as you need it. I like to kind of hide it behind the main panel here. It's a nice compact way of showing it. But you could also make it a little pop out button when you want it. You could stack it between and have it always visible. You can drag it over the image, whatever you want to do. That's why it's a separate panel to give you the choice of exactly how you're going to use it. So I'm going to put it back where I want it up here. And let's take a closer look at what it's doing. Just like the main panel at the top right, you have a menu of options where you can go choose the interface size to match the main panel if you're using the small size, which I'm not. So I'm going to go back to large. You also have the tool tips, so we can determine whether or not we have tool tips that'll show as we hover, as well as panel tips, which I like to use here, because as I hover over the buttons, you see this text down below here, and that's just telling you what these buttons do. It's the exact same text as the tool tip, just a faster way to get that information. And since the basics panel has all this extra space available and I hide it under Lumenzia, I just like to leave it visible as a quick reference for any shortcut keys I might use with the different buttons. So let's take a look at the actual buttons up top here with the ability to view a layer in isolation. And for example, this layer here has a lot of complexity. We have a brighter version of this image, which you can tell from the thumbnail, but then there's a layer mask, there's a blend if, it's in a light and blend mode, it has opacity less than 100%. There's a lot of things going on. So it's really hard to know exactly what this layer is all about. If I wanna see the actual pixels, well, I can click on the visibility icon to view it in isolation creates this temporary red layer. Now we're looking at the actual pixels and it's in normal blend mode, 100% opacity without a mask or blend if creating any limited view. When you're done, you can just simply delete it or click the visibility icon again to get rid of it and go on working with your image. I'm gonna go back here and let's take a look at this layer mask by clicking show mask, which you can just keep clicking it to show or hide it, but you can go and paint directly on the layer mask. And we have a few options on top right here to help do that. We can click black to get black paint, or we can grab gray paint to paint the zing, or we can go and grab white to paint all the way up to white. So it's your choice, whatever you might need. Then we have the burn and dodge brushes, which are a little bit more nuanced. Whereas the paint brushes just paint in a simple color, using these will give you a little more control. For example, if I click on the dodge brush, well, nothing's gonna happen on black. What it's gonna do is it's gonna grab gray values and make them lighter, and black is not within its range of what it can adjust. But if I go down to the gray values, you can see I can lighten these progressively by brushing over them. So I can take things that are gray in the mask and nudge them towards being more visible with this without worrying about making my black stuff visible. So it gives you more control when you use this than when you just paint with white paint. The opposite is the burn brush with the minuses here which is not really gonna affect the white stuff in the mask, but it will push the gray values towards black. So I like these quite a lot for refining my layer mask. Let's click show mask to hide that again and take a look at the ability to disable the mask. When we click this, get the red X here, and what it's doing is it's temporarily disabling this mask, which is the same as showing what would happen if we had no mask or if it was painted white. So this is a great way of looking at, if I keep painting with white in this layer, what is going to happen. You can see just how much I'd be able to lighten and adjust the image in every part of the scene here. Next up, we have a bunch of selection related options. Let's create a selection by clicking on L and I'm gonna create a lasso selection around the tree here with the intent of doing a content aware fill to remove it in just a moment here. So once you've created that selection, and I'm gonna pull the basics panel out so we can just watch the cell button laments. You can see we have an active selection here. If I click on deselect, reselect, I can destroy or recreate that selection, which is a nice way of temporarily turning it off, painting freehand, going back, and continuing to work with it. Or if I just want to show and hide ants, I can click on ants to hide it. We can see the selection button is staying green, so I've not gotten rid of the selection. I've just made the ants invisible. So it just gives you a little more control here. With modify, I could change the shape of it. So for example, I could contract by using minus 100 or expand by using a positive number. I could put in plus, you know, 65 pixels or something like that and feather if I want to, or even invert it, click okay. And you see this expansion there. That's the kind of thing I would typically do if I'm working with a quick select 
and I wanted to, for example, pull back away from the tree line or something like that. I'm going to command Z to undo that and let's stick with our selection as we move forward here. Take a look here. We have also the invert, which is simply is going to give us the option to either flip the selection or the layer mask. So I'm going to just flip my selection. You see everything else is selected. So just quick ability to invert what you want to here. And I'm back at this original selection. I want to fill this in. So we'll use the fill button for content aware fill. And it's important that I have the right thing targeted. I don't want to fill in the layer mask and I don't want to fill in this layer because I'm not using it for the sky. I want to content aware fill with this layer. So I'm going to make that active, click on fill and you see I have a bunch of different options. I could fill with white or black, which is great for filling in parts of a layer mask to complete them without having to spend a lot of time brushing. Or I can use content aware fill and I'm going to use that without sampling all layers. I don't want to bring in these other things to the base layer. I want to just use what I have. I could, if I want to expand, contract or feather here. So same thing as using modify, but it just does it in one step right here. So if I had a quick select that went down to the horizon line, I could, for example, pull back with maybe minus two pixels and then feather by a couple pixels just to get a better result. But it's not relevant here. So I'm gonna leave these at zero and click okay, which gives me the content where fill dialog. And you see it's caught up with a preview and I see a bunch of weird looking trees here because Photoshop is currently targeting all this stuff with green as a potential source material. So just using the negative brush here, we'll paint over the branches in green to make sure that they're not being used to fill in that area. And then we let go. You'll see Photoshop catches up and removes them. So we get a nice content aware fill. When we're happy with it, click OK. And you see we've output our content aware fill here. And the nice thing about this is you can even work with a smart object. So if this was a smart object, we would have gotten the same separate result here. So very flexible way of doing your content aware fill. Next up, we have the ability to create a clipping mask. So if we click this, we get this little arrow, which is saying, apply this only to the areas affected by what's underneath. It's just kind of a built-in function in Photoshop, it's just a quick way to turn those off and on and apply adjustments, for example, to a specific part of the image. We can click on stamp to create a copy of the entire image as its own separate layer. So you don't see anything happen because it is exactly the same as what's underneath. But now you can go and change blend modes or do other things to it, apply filters, whatever you want to do. It's not really applicable here. So I'm going to go ahead and trash that. I don't need it. Next up is smart object, which will let me convert anything to a smart object. So if I shift click to select all my layers, click on smart object, converts everything into a smart object. And I could then, for example, apply sharpening or some kind of filter to it if I wanted to. Uh, I don't really need that. So I'm going to undo that by clicking smart object again. And you see if there's a smart object, you now get a few choices. I could create an independent duplicate. I could convert it to just pixels by rasterizing it, or I can extract the contents. And I'm going to do that to go back to the original interior contents of that layer. Next up, we have verticals, which is designed to help deal with converging verticals in a guided way. So if I want to straighten this tree, well, I can click and drag from the ruler to pull out a guide. And you can see now I have a nice reference for what straight should be in the image. And when I click on verticals, I'll have a few options to straighten it out. But first I want to make sure I'm actually selecting all my pixel layers because I want to warp everything all together. And otherwise I'll have a misalignment of the layers. Click on verticals and you can see I can either warp both sides, you know, symmetrically. So if this was a building and I had kind of converging verticals where I'm looking up or down at it, it would change both sides equally. In this case, I don't need that. I'm just going to change the one side and I'm going to leave the option on to clear the guides when done. So this blue guide that I created will be automatically removed for me after this process is done. So I click OK. And all I got to do now is click and drag from the appropriate corner using my blue line as guide here. I can see this is now straight and I may pull it a little bit just to remove that bit of sky. And when I'm happy with it, I can click enter or the check mark and accept that as my output. So just a nice way of cleaning up any sort of converging verticals in your image. Next, we have the raw and levels. So let's say, for example, I wanted to adjust this mask. Well, when I click on it to make it the target, I could go click on levels and now I see it and I can go and bring in the whites and blacks as I want to adjust this mask. Click OK when done, or I'm just going to click cancel because I don't need it. Similarly, clicking on raw will let me go here. I'm going to click again on my layer mask. Clicking raw will let me use camera raw on the layer mask. So I could go, for example, and 
change shadows and whites or blacks. Whatever I want to do, I can adjust this layer mask through the use of camera raw. So it's a nice way of having a more targeted adjustment of these uh, masks that might have a lot of nuance for you with luminosity masks. Of course, if I want to change the actual image, I can click on the pixels, click on raw, and I'll do camera raw on the image itself. And of course, you're seeing a preview with the whole image here because this is outside of what was cropped after I stretched it, but we can go and, you know, for example, add uh, more color to the image through use of saturation or whatever I might want to do. I'm going to cancel that here since I don't need that. Lastly are the different blend modes. So this is already in the light and blend mode. I could switch back to normal. I could go to light and darken, color, luminosity, difference blend mode, whatever I might want here, or use these arrows. So if I click the right and left arrows, I just cycle through different blend modes. What you're going to get if we go through enough of these, you're going to see that there's a few things like uh, screen or hard light here that are not available in the button. So there's more options when you cycle through here, but it's not going to be all the options. For example, you're not going to see divide show up as an option because it's really not a useful blend mode for photography. So these arrows are just going to cycle through the useful blend modes. I'm going to go back to lighten because that's what I want and just leave things there. Be sure to click on the linked videos here to learn even more about what you can do with the Lumenzia Basics panel.